What is up YouTube? It's Josh. This is the Den of Nerds. This video is all about Luke Skywalker and how powerful I think he is going to be in episode 8. So let's get right into it. Now first of all I want to mention I'm going to talk about some things that are actually outside of canon, kind of drawing some conclusions on the business end of sort of things. Um, just to inform and further drive my point in. And then I am actually going to talk about some in-universe stuff, uh, power levels, training, uh, things that we've seen in canon, yada, yada, yada. So let's get right into it. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is expanded universe, now Legends. In Legends, Luke Skywalker went on to be the most powerful Force user Ever. George Lucas said several times that not only in the stories that he liked from the EU, but in his own head canon, which at the time was canon, he imagined Skywalker becoming the most powerful force user of all time, accomplishing things that no one else had accomplished before him, and gaining a complete control of the force, becoming one with it, and doing all sorts of crazy, crazy things. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, that's Legends. It doesn't count. You're kind of right and you're kind of wrong. Here's the thing. The people that are in the story group right now, the people that are telling these stories, they are huge fans of Star Wars and they are huge fans of the expanded universe. So it would be crazy to think that these people that are huge fans that are bringing in Thrawn, that are bringing in Mandalorian Jedis, that are bringing in Holocrons, the Bendu, the Wills, all these other things into canon, that those people would not want to see Luke Skywalker be very, very powerful and be at least part of what he was in the expanded universe. They might tone him down a little bit, which might be okay, but we can reasonably conclude that because of the state of Luke Skywalker from Legends and the fact that these writers mostly love Legends, they will bring Skywalker in in a powerful, powerful form. The next thing I want to talk about is the business end and Disney itself. I mean, okay, think about this, guys. Disney literally created Episode 7 all around finding and bringing Luke Skywalker back into the fold. The very opening line of the crawl, Luke Skywalker has vanished. Do you honestly think with all of that buildup that they would just allow him to come in and be a mediocre player and not a super, super powerful force? A, that would almost discredit The Force Awakens and some of the sacrifices that certain characters made to bring him back into the fold? and B, it would kill them financially from not only a merchandising place, but also from a revenue of um, comic books, uh, novels, um, the theater experience itself, and ticket sales. If they literally brought Skywalker in and he wasn't a boss, it would crush them from a financial perspective. This means they will not let that happen. They built it up to be a huge payoff. If they left us just without that payoff, it would cause a rift in the fandom, and that is the last thing that Disney wants. The last thing that I wanna talk about that's kinda of outside universe that will inform how strong he's going to be is actually a slight spoiler, perhaps. So if you don't wanna have anything for episode eight spoiled, then leave right now, come back, uh, or skip ahead like 30 seconds or so. I'm gonna talk briefly about a scene that has been widely publicized, uh, and then, uh, so, so this is your chance. Leave, leave, leave. Okay, so the scene I'm talking about is of course a fight scene on the planet in which Luke is right now, and it is a fight scene between him and the Knights of Ren. People have said that there is wire work used and that Luke literally defeats all of the Knights of Ren single-handedly. So, you know, this is of course kind of speculation, but there's been so much smoke that there has to be something there that's fire. I'm telling you, I really do think that that scene is legitimate. There are legitimate photos. There are legitimate sources that saw this. Um, they brought in the extras to do this sort of thing. Luke literally beats all of the Knights of Ren in this scene that we kind of have spoiled for us. And that is just, the, that's the last thing I want to talk about that's outside the universe, okay? So now let's get into the canonical stuff. This is the story stuff. This is the stuff that I really, really enjoy. So we kind of have to take um, 
a temperature, if you will, as far as where Luke Skywalker is when we last see him in canon, okay? So between Empire and Return of the Jedi, Luke becomes incredibly powerful. He walks into Jab Jabba's palace and kills two of those guards by simply pointing at them and having their hearts literally destroyed, okay? So he can kill people just by looking at them. That's pretty ridiculous. But fast forward to the end of that film, and he goes toe to toe with Darth Vader, who is an incredible duelist and single handedly cut down many of the remaining Jedi. And he puts up a fight and actually defeats Vader in a one on one duel. He doesn't kill him, of course. He feels it. He looks at his hand, does that thing, kind of sees himself getting into the dark side, it takes a step back. But it is. It is true that he literally beats Vader one on one. Okay, now you can say all sorts of things about where Vader's mind might have been at that moment, but the reality of it is this is Vader and Luke beats Vader. So you have a guy who can kill people by looking at them and he literally beats Lord Vader in a one on one duel. The next and really only glimpse of Luke that we get is in the Shattered Empire comic in the fourth issue where he goes on a mission to retrieve a Force artifact with actually Poe Dameron's mother. Now, Luke does a number of different things in this comic from, you know, deflecting blaster bolts, repelling grenades into people, um, really impressive stuff. Nothing that's too crazy, but it shows us that his skills are not diminishing in the slightest, that he's sharp as ever and continuing to train and have prowess. So from here, we have to jump on the speculation train, but here's here we go. So Luke literally formulates a new Jedi Academy. And there's this phrase that I remember from when I was training in martial arts back in the day. My father is a guru to you know, treats his martial arts and things like that. One of the things he always said is to teach is to truly know. And what he meant by that was in order to know a thing good enough to teach it, you really have to know it. I mean, you can't kind of fake it, right? There's questions that come up. You have to know the intricacies of the thing. So when one is teaching something, whether it be um, how to use a tool or how to do something with one's body or how to use the force in this example, you have to truly know it to be able to teach it. So you have Luke Skywalker continuing his journey of knowledge when it comes to the force. Now, he's looking for the first Jedi temple, right? And he's looking for ancient Jedi temples. And this is, this is a really cool aspect to me. He is already in contact with Yoda, with Vader, and with Obi-Wan Kenobi. These are three of the most powerful and knowledgeable Jedi that we have ever seen in canon. But here's the thing. Their knowledge may have been tainted. I think that one of the things that Lucasfilm is starting to establish in canon is that the Jedi of Obi-Wan's era, of Yoda's era, were mistaken in the way that they perceived the Force to work. There were truths that they were missing. If you look at the Bendu being introduced in Rebels and the Wills being introduced um, not only in uh, possibly Clone Wars, but in Rogue One, we start to see that they are filling out the canon with a deeper, more expansive knowledge of the Force. So if Luke is looking for secrets that were beyond even those teachers, right? Yoda, uh, Yoda Anakin, and Obi-Wan, we can only surmise that he's on a path to a knowledge of the Force that would far exceed even those masters, okay? It is part of the reason why I think he has chosen to remain isolated. First of all, when he built his new academy, he built it in seclusion, from what was going on in the New Republic. And that was not an accident. I think he knew that one of the mistakes the Jedi had made before was being too close to politics, being too intertwined to the, the goings ons of the galaxy in order for the Jedi to truly find the knowledge they were looking for and to be at one with the Force. I think he realized they had to be separate from what was going on in the core worlds. So that was part of it, but I also think that Luke, as he gained more and more power and more and more knowledge, realized that he could influence this in any way he wanted to. 
the true way was to back up and let these people figure it out on their own. So I think him literally leaving is another hint as far as how powerful he truly was. The last thing I want to talk about is the fact that the Knights of Ren or, you know, Kylo Ren, whoever came in and destroyed Luke's academy was not able to kill him. Now, this could be because he was elsewhere or it could be that he was there and just unable to be beaten. So the simple fact that he is alive shows us uh, that he is at least, you know, has that prowess, that strength that we know that Luke Skywalker had in uh, Legends, right? Because if if you have an entity that is strong enough to take out an entire Jedi Academy to almost wipe out the Jedi for the second time, but it's unable to complete the task because of Skywalker, then you can only surmise that Luke is strong enough to stand up to that force, whether that was the Knight of Ren or Snoke. And speaking of Snoke, the simple fact that Snoke fears that Luke coming back would be just the worst thing ever. I mean, watch The Force Awakens. He fears above all else Skywalker returning to the fold. He's willing to do anything and put a lot of his plans um, at risk in order to stop Luke from coming back into the fold. And I have a lot of other people that tell me like, well, dude, that's because he was just going to train new Jedi. It had nothing to do with how strong Luke was. You're not thinking logically if, if you're making that conclusion, because if Luke wasn't strong, Snoke would just kill him to stop that new order from rising. It's not like Luke's going to be able to come back and instantly all these new Jedi are going to pop up. No, the idea is Luke will train new Jedi. Luke will bring people to the light side of the Force. And there's not a damn thing that Snoke will be able to do about it. That's that's like written into the statement. That's, that's obvious. Um, otherwise, he would just go kill him, right? Or kill him once he had returned. Uh, the fact that he can't and that's obvious, is yet another hint as far as how strong Luke Skywalker will be in episode eight. But let me know in the comment section, is there something I missed? Is there um, a little piece of canon somewhere that's, that, that, that slipped past me that expresses how strong he will be? Do any of these points not make any sense to you? Um, more than willing to have a discussion about these sort of things in the comment section below. I personally think they're gonna bring Luke back. He's going to be super powerful, stronger in the force than we have ever seen anyone in canon. I think he's going to be able to lift entire Star Destroyers out of the sky, shift the courses of battles, um, you know, do things that we have never seen before. And I think that he's so strong in the force that his fear, his own fear of his strength is what is keeping him in isolation right now. And uh, I just, I think that that's kind of the key and how strong he will be in the movie. So uh, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. But let's check that nerd card really quickly. The question is about Luke Skywalker. And the question is, what is the name of the planet that Luke is in exile on? And it's that planet that we find him at at the very end of The Force Awakens. Answer that question in the comment section below. Like this video if you thought it was cool and subscribe to this channel to get more cool videos, Star Wars, comic books, Marvel movies, DC movies, all sorts of stuff. I hope you're having an awesome and nerdy day. See you.